Hi, this is Bob and Preston Folkstead. We uh, made this video kind of showing how we made and designed the ARK rifle. The ARK rifle is kind of a unique rifle. It's a 7.62x39 rifle based on the AK-47 that uses the common AR-15 slash M16 components. Um, what we're showing you now is um, our Haas VM3SS CNC machine with a five axis training table on it. So for machinists, because we have two crowds of people here, we have gun people, we have machine people. So the machinist, this is a three plus two machine um, with wrench shop probing. Um, the kind of the tooling we're using for this is we're using a half inch um, red line high helix uh, end mill for aluminum. We use some Kyocera tools, we use some notchy drills, um, so pretty high speed stuff. Um, the vice that's on our training table is a fifth axis brand. Um, and it's kind of showing the roughing operations right now with the videos we're going along. So, as you can see, we kind of have the probe mounted off to the left um, front part of the table to keep it away from the chips. Um, even though the VF3 is a, a pretty big machine as far as CNC's goes, it's not super used, but it's large. Um, once you put the training table on, you don't have a lot of space for tool changes and things like that so it was kind of ideal to get the probe up and out of the way um, so the arc's kind of a battle rifle uh, it was originally designed for military contractors to use overseas um, so the arc is unique so it uses the AK-47 mag um, we have arsenal from Bulgaria build our bolts and bolt carriers um, it's kind of a it's kind of a unique gun. Okay. So for the machinist or gun freaks out there, we're machining uh, 7075 aluminum. We either get it from Alcola or Kaiser. So it's an American milled product. Um, the Haas VF3 machines made in America. So we're using American made machine, American made end mills. Um, the Kyocera end mills we use are made in Japan for the inserted ones. Um, that's the one inch one you'll see going now. We have this on fast forward. This whole machine cycle takes about an hour and ten minutes. Um, there are some things we could do to speed it up. We could make some forgings and do some things, but since we're in, in a limited production environment right now, we're just going ahead and making everything out of the aluminum, out of the billet chunks. So this is about a, a 12 inch long piece by seven inches by two inches that we start with. So you can kind of see it flip around. Um, now it's kind of doing the end plate where the buffer tube mounts. Uh, it's profiling around where our, our uh, top cover mounts right now. So now it's pocketing out. Now it's gonna uh, kind of open some things up. It's doing some clearancing. Now it's drilling. Um, it's going to do some tapping here in a minute. It's, right now it's actually boring the hole for the single point, single point mount, and then it'll come in and put a T-slot cutter inside to put the little uh, groove in. It's amazing how long it takes to do some simple things. So here we're drilling, tapping for the hand guard. We're drilling all the holes. Um, now it's doing the other side for the single point mount. Now it's opening up for this, the safety. Um, it's kind of a complex program. We're using Mastercam for programming. We use SolidWorks for design. Um, this is not your, your typical dude that comes out of uh, like a junior college or something you can't normally program something this complex. Um, our programmer, his name's Dan, he's a mechanical engineer, graduated from Iowa State. Um, here we're kind of profiling for the mag well, so it's roughing right now. It's going to do some finish passes. Now it's coming in with a, uh, I think it's a 3 16 end mill, long reach, so it's uh, doing a high speed machining path, tool path to kind of go down and, and, and create the mag well. Um, and then when you uh, get towards the end of this it'll do a full five axis function to do the flare so from a machinist point of view there's about a hundred ways to attack this problem 
what we want to do is is on this first setup of the, of the uh, arc receiver we want to try to minimize tool changes and, and minimize um, setups so we want to keep the the part stable in the machine and then go to the second op where we remove the material that we're clamped onto right now and uh, make it as simple as possible so as much as we can do with software it's 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 better for us so you'll kind of see this thing it's doing its finish pass right now so it's, it's stepping down as you can see the, the end mill keeps going down so now it's going to do uh, the clearance for the mag release so it's coming in i'm thinking this is like a 3 16 end mill um this little guy and it's long because of where we have to go there's really not a great way to do this we can't flip it up on the other end because the tool holder wants to crash into the part um, that's one thing that kind of stinks about five axis machining is, is you have to really watch the workpiece and the vise and the trunnion table and tool changes so there are some things if you're a machinist that we could take to make this a little faster but we're trying to be safe on the machine and the materials and our parts um, now we will speed it up as it goes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Thanks.